Hi, my name is Bly and welcome to our YouTube channel. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about a group of artifacts that we have in our collection called the Benin Bronzes. My name is Bly Straub and I'm Senior Curator for the Jamestown Settlement Museum of the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation. Uh, we are standing in the permanent gallery of Jamestown Settlement um, in front of a case that displays some objects from Benin, Central Africa. Um, as a curator, you know, it's my job to sort of uh, take care of the objects, not only acquire them, but interpret them. And if you think about it, museums are not neutral places. Um, depending on how they, what they talk about and how they talk about it, they actually are projecting a, a viewpoint. Um, in England, people with my job are called keepers, which I think in a way is, is kind of more appropriate because like a zookeeper, you know, you're, you're caring and feeding your charges, you know, your animals, and in my case it would be my artifacts. Um, they're not static. They don't have just one story to tell. There are many stories that can be told um, from materials, not just the obvious. And especially as we, as times change and we're sort of being challenged to be more inclusive of our stories uh, and not just gravitate to the easily told ones which are accessible to us, you know, the ones that the, the English wrote down. Um, and their point of view, which has really been the predominant stories um, told in, in museums. Um, so today we're kind of looking um, beyond that and the Benin bronzes that are in the case behind me are a you know, prime example of that change. Benin bronzes um, are not really bronze, they're brass, but, but they're also incorporating other materials, leather, wood, cloth, coral, that were looted from the Kingdom of Benin, which was a very powerful kingdom in Central Africa, in 1897 in what was called the British Punitive Expedition. Uh, the British had been making inroads in Central Africa, controlling the trade, but they were held back by this kingdom, the, the Oba, or king, was very powerful and um, most European nations were well aware of him and, and involved with trading uh, with him. So the, the, in 1897, the British made an expedition to the area, which was supposed to be um, friendly, but it was rather provocative because of the time that it was made. And um, several people were killed, several English were killed, and many of the African porters who were accompanying them. In retaliation, the British sent the Navy on this punitive raid, uh, which plundered and burned the royal palace. Um, they acquired many, many objects, 500, over 500 of which went into the British Museum. But the Benin bronzes are scattered all over Europe now. We happen to have at least uh, two that were, can be traced directly to the 1897 expedition. There are two others in the case behind me that I have not yet been able to trace. Um, I'm still working on that. Provenance is really hard sometimes to determine. Uh, sometimes uh, the trail of how it was acquired and how it changed hands um, is purposely cloudy because um, the sellers don't really want you to know, you know how they acquired it. Um, the plaque that we have um, actually changed hands several times through German museums before it arrived in New York and then was acquired by Jamestown, Yorktown at auction. Um, the other object was more it's a knife and it's more direct. Um, it stayed in the person who acquired it. He happened to be a naval, a young naval um, individual, uh, ensign. I think he was an ensign at the time. Um, and he acquired it directly, kept it in his family, and then finally after his death, his um, family decided to put it up for auction. 
Uh, we are working with um, a consortium of museums uh, called the Benin Dialogue Group who are um, trying to guide di different museums who have such objects into what they should do about them. Um, whether it's restitution to Nigeria, uh, whether it is reinterpretation of them, whether it's uh, a permanent or temporary loan. But the, the feeling is, and the Jamestown Yorktown Foundation believes, that it really is up to the Nigerian authorities to direct uh, what we should do. It is not really our place to say um, what we would do with them. We have put in a new label to acknowledge the fact that these objects were stolen from Africa and that we are, we are trying to work for their proper interpretation and, and final um, resting place, whether it's here or in Nigeria. Um, the Benin uh, Dialogue Group is actually working uh, with the authorities in Nigeria to build a museum to house objects that are, may come back from all over the world. Um, and because, you know, the question is, well, can't we take better care of them than they can? Um, but yes, at the moment we can, but not in the future. They will have a very beautiful museum uh, being presently um, being designed. Archaeology is taking place on the grounds where it will be erected. And um, we're also working with a group that is putting all the Benin objects online. So our objects will be photographed and documented and available for researchers all over the world, especially the Nigerians who have very few of their own Benin bronzes in their country. Well, thanks for listening. And um, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. See you next time.